Well, hey there, neighbor. This year I realized just how difficult it is to find sweet potato slips. None of the local nurseries carry them, and if you order them online, the price they're asking for is just pretty outrageous. So today I'm gonna to show you how to take store-bought sweet potatoes and turn them into an endless supply of sweet potato slips that you can use for years to come. First off, let's talk about what type of sweet potatoes you need. You can't really just go to any store and pick up any sweet potato and expect them to grow slips for you. The sweet potatoes I have here today, I actually got at Whole Foods, and these are a purple sweet potato. On the outside, they're pretty much brown and in kind of, kind of ugly looking, but on the inside, let me show you. And look at how just vibrant purple that is on the inside. These sweet potatoes are extremely healthy, extremely uh, easy to grow, and really easy to create slips from. Now, realistically, you can get any kind of organic sweet potato. You don't wanna just go to Walmart and pick up just whatever sweet potatoes they have. You wanna make sure you get something that's organic. With a normal sweet potato from a normal grocery store, you're gonna end up having a growth inhibitor that's sprayed onto those potatoes. And what that does is it stops those potatoes from growing sprouts, which are called slips in sweet potatoes. For a lot of people, when they go to the grocery store to buy their sweet potatoes, they don't wanna see things growing out of their sweet potatoes. And that's why that growth inhibitor is sprayed on them. But if you go organic, they don't have that growth inhibitor sprayed on them. And so they're much more likely to grow sprouts for you. Now, I have seen people get away with just using normal store-bought, just regular potatoes, and it worked for them, but you are gonna have better success if you go organic. It doesn't have to be these awesome little purple sweet potatoes. It can be really any kind of sweet potato that you want. The first thing you're gonna wanna get is some kind of container to put soil in. And it doesn't matter what kind of soil. Today, we're just using some kind of just little bagged soil. What are you balking at? <laughs> Chicken's going crazy back there. I think she laid an egg today and she needs to tell everyone about it. All right, there you go. All right, now pipe down back there for a minute. I'm trying to film a video here. So the soil you use isn't gonna be all that important. You want something that drains well, so that way your potatoes aren't just sitting in like this sopping wet soil. So just something that drains well, really, any kind of potting soil or potting mix, seed starting mix, any of that is gonna work well. Now, the stuff I have here right now is bone dry. So I need to, I need to moisten this up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of water here, mix that in, and you wanna get it to a, uh, a point where you can squeeze it and a couple drops of water comes out, but nothing too much. You don't want it to be sopping wet because then what'll happen is your potatoes, when they're sitting in there, they're actually gonna start to rot. And once they rot, they are not gonna produce slips for you. Kind of holds its shape a little bit, but I can still break it up. It's not just muck. And when you put it into your container, it, for us, we're just using like this little Sterilite tote here. And you want a few inches of, of soil here. So that way you can put your potatoes about three quarters of the way into it and still have a little bit of room down below. All right, so when you plant your sweet potatoes, you want to plant them this direction and not this direction. And the reason why you want to plant it this way is because a lot of times those roots and those slips are going to be growing out of one of the ends. So you don't want to put it that way. So when you put it in this way, you wanna kind of work it in there and put it about three quarters of the way into that soil. And just do that with all the sweet potatoes you have. And you wanna make sure that you leave about a half inch in between the potatoes. You can kind of cram them in there. Today, I don't have a whole lot of potatoes to do. So there's plenty of space in here for them, but you can put them quite a bit closer than they are here. So just kind of work them into the soil, make sure they're in there all right. I'm gonna put these little half pieces in and see what happens. I'm honestly not sure if those will grow, we'll see. So you get your sweet potatoes in just like that. And then what I do at this point is I'm gonna take these sweet potatoes right here. I'm gonna make sure that I, they are nice and moist. Honestly, I should probably be using a little mister for this, but once the potatoes are in the soil, the soil's moist, they're planted, everything's ready to go. What I'm gonna do is grab a cover for the little tote. And what I'm using is just a 1020 tray. And what this is gonna do is kind of keep some of the light out and it's also gonna keep it nice and humid in there. It's gonna keep the heat in. It's gonna keep it just the, the, the environment that these potatoes are gonna like. They like it really warm, really humid. And speaking of warmth, another thing we do, this isn't something that you need to do, but it's something that really will help your percentage of sprouts that you get. What we do is we take a seedling uh, heat mat with a thermostat and we set the thermostat to about 80 degrees. I'm gonna put this on the on the seedling mat with the humidity dome on and then I'm gonna check on it about once every, every other day or so and just check and make sure that it's still moist, everything is looking good in there. And then after about three weeks or so, you're gonna get your potato slips. And if once they start going, they're really gonna start taking off and just getting crazy. So with this one, the, there's probably four or five potatoes in here, and this is one that we started about a month ago. And these are ready to pull off these potatoes and start rooting out. Once you start to see potato slips coming up, you want to pull the humidity dome off and get it under some lights, whether that be grow lights or maybe even a window seal, just something that they're gonna get some kind of light so that way they can start growing. 
You don't need to use any kind of fertilizer because the potatoes are actually gonna have the fertilizer for it. So you just wanna start letting them grow. And honestly, a few of these have gone a little bit too far. So I'm gonna start cutting these off and, and we'll start utilizing these, these uh, potato slips here. At this point, you've got potato slips that are connected to the potatoes, but we need to remove them from the potatoes and root these out individually. So let's go ahead and start working on that. And I'm gonna show you how this kind of works here. So I'm gonna dig down and I'm gonna try to cut this at the soil level. Realistically, these only need to be maybe three inches tall before you harvest them from the potatoes. And at that point, they're gonna be able to sprout their own roots. And if you look here, so with this one, how it's really, really long, at every single one of these nodes, I don't know how well this is gonna show up, but there's little dots right there and little dots right there. Every single one of these nodes, I could cut this plant at every single one of these nodes and every single one is gonna start creating its own roots. I can just create all these different plants out of this one potato slip, but I want this to kind of have a head start, so I'm not gonna cut this off. If I'm smart, what I'll do is, oh, look at these roots, check that out. What I'll do is if I'm smart, I'm gonna take these plants, I'm gonna put them in water. I'm going to root them out further and get them ready to put out in the garden. And then once I put them in the garden, each one of these plants can produce 10 pounds of potatoes for you. Once you have these potatoes, you can then save those potatoes. And because at that point, you're not spraying, you're not spraying any kind of growth inhibitor on these potatoes. So you can take these potatoes that you're growing with your potato slips and you can just create more sweet potato slips from them. I'm gonna be able to share sweet potato slips with the whole neighborhood, I think. All right, here's what I have left. I've got a few little slips here and there, but they're still pretty small. So I'm gonna go ahead and let those keep growing because I've got literally probably 40 or 50 other potato slips here that are ready to be rooted or already rooted. If you check these out, look at the roots coming off of that potato slip. That's awesome. Same with this one. Tons of roots already. That's that's so cool. So I let them go kind of longer than I should have, but it kind of worked out for me. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is not all of your sweet potato slips are going to be just awesome with roots already. Technically, you can just go ahead and put them in the ground with or without roots. And most likely the ones that aren't rooted are still going to root but your success rate is gonna be better if you hold off, don't put them in the garden quite yet, and you actually make sure you get them all rooted. And to get them rooted, it's really easy. We're just gonna use a solo cup here. And like this one has no roots at all. This one has no roots at all. And as I'm going, what I'm gonna do is pull these bottom leaves off. Now I've just got these slips. I'm gonna put them in here. Same with this. I'm gonna pull some leaves off here on the bottom. And I'm just gonna stuff a bunch into this cup here. And then I'm going to put some water in that cup and it, it doesn't really need to be anything special. You can just set these in a windowsill. It's gonna to be totally fine. You can just kind of sit it wherever as long as the temperatures are decent. You don't wanna, you know, obviously put them outside if it's freezing or anything like that. Just make sure that you have it in this water. I think one of the most important things to remember is you need to start this early enough. And if you don't start it early enough, you might be forced to just kind of put it in the garden without roots. And most likely it's gonna root out. Ideally, what you wanna do is start early enough to where you can get these roots and you can get it rooted out in a cup or whatever you put it in. And that way you have a higher success rate when it does go into the garden. Now I showed you some that have some roots already just from being in the, in the tote on the potatoes, but I haven't shown you any that I actually rooted out myself in, in these cups. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put some B-roll right here and you're gonna see what these plants look like after they've, they've made their own roots and I've rooted them in these cups. And this is something that's really easy. Most of them are gonna root. You're not really gonna see too many issues because these plants, they, they naturally just want to root. They want to root and just grab onto anything they can. So if these aren't something that's gonna be really hard to take hold and to, to get to root. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, go down and hit the like button because I've got a cougar to feed. After you do that, go ahead and watch this video right here because if you enjoyed this video here today, you're going to enjoy this one too. So head over there, watch that video, and I'll see you there.